Paya Yushi, Sinu, Ritvika, Ananya, Mishti. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thanks for taking the time out on a Saturday evening uh, to learn something new and, and learn about creativity. So really happy that you guys are all here. Hey, Tanish. Tanish, can you hear us? He's on mute. So even if he's speaking, probably we cannot hear him. <laughs> That's fine. Tanish has uh, done, uh, you know, the Harvard program with us, so I know him before. Tanish, are you able to hear us? You can write on the chat box as well. Yeah, yeah I can hear you. I can hear you. <laughs> perfect, perfect. How are you doing, Tanish? I'm fine. What about you? Good, good. Um, excited uh, for you to join us and uh, good to see you after the Harvard program once again. I'm excited to know about like what mom has to teach us. <laughs> Perfect. So, um, Dr. Sobel, I think at this point of time, um, you know, you can switch on your camera as well. Um, you know, if uh, there is something you would like to start with, you know, just we have kids out here and, and everyone, please, if you could all switch on your cameras. This is, you know, before we have 50 people who will be joining us. So this is the time um, that you can have your intimate questions that you want to ask Dr. Sobel, anything really in general. Um, and that'll be great. And I'm sure Dr. Sobel will be more than happy to share her insights or just say hi. So it'd be great if all of you could switch on your cameras. At this point in time, trust me, this is the only time we'll ask you to do that. Once the presentation starts, you can turn off your cameras once again and just relax, sit back and, and uh, hear her speak. So we we'll just request everyone to do that. Thank you. I hope I can respond. <laughs> I'll try my best. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Good evening. I am in uh, Phoenix, Arizona right now. So it's about almost 6.30 a.m. my time. So woo, good morning. <laughs> so nice to see your faces. This is exciting. Man, I wish I had this when I was a teenager. This is awesome. Look at those headsets. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I mean, I can't even imagine how much technology has changed, right, in these last couple of years. I mean, you're sitting all the way in Arizona and like, you know, teaching <laughs> a short class to across India. So much fun. I remember the chat room was just coming out on the internet and we were so excited to talk to people from different parts of the world. And now chat rooms are so passe. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about Messenger and Instagram and Snapchat. True, true. Hi, Anna. So I'm, I'm able to say hi to everyone whose faces I can see. Deep, Ayushi. Hi, Anand. Good to see you. Now, I'm not... Uh, too, too far away from you guys culturally. I, I was born and raised in Iran and I came to the US to do my higher education studies. So I'm a little familiar. And my last name is, I hear is like a name of a square in, uh, <laughs> in India. So I'm dying to go there and meet, see my name on a, on a sign, Homayun. Yeah, it's actually in Delhi, um, Dr. Sogol, we have a, a beautiful Himayu's tomb. Um, you know, you can look it up and it comes in one of the best architectural sites in the world. So, yeah. 
The one thing about growing up in our countries is the long history tests. <laughs> we have to deal with thousands of years. Whereas in the US, it's like 200 years. It's nothing. It's like a chapter in our history books. So I, I just want to apologize in advance for stealing the jewels all, all that long time ago <laughs> from Iran <laughs> to India. We had a little Not bit of a problem, but you, gave us, you, you guys gave us a, a lot of architectural, uh, you know, marbles as well. So, um, a lot of, a lot of and, and good cuisine too. I mean, you can't it? underestimate, like, you can't underst underestimate the Mughal cuisine in India. Yeah. So great right. cultural it's exchanges, so right? Hi, Mishti. It's nice to see you. Hi. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, we still have people joining us, but of course, um, guys, any uh, anything uh, that you guys would like to share? What are your expectations from today? I know it's a Saturday night. Uh, you yeah. could be doing a lot of cooler things, but it's really nice that you've all decided to come here. Hi, Urjit. Really nice to see you. Seems like Does you've anyone got a... have any startups or side gigs? I want to know that. Week, so I'm going to have a party at 10 with my friends, a scary movie, maybe. Oh, yeah, it is Halloween. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, okay, sorry, I, I didn't actually... have a costume. I... Nina, she should have told me. I should have worn a costume. I totally forgot. I have it. I can wear a, you know, the <laughs> Yeah, guys, go, go wear your costumes. Whatever you need to do, man. Okay, sure. <laughs> Just a minute. I will come back again. Go, go, go. We have 10 minutes. <laughs> no, and, and you know, it, it's, it's a doubly special, uh, Dr. Sobu, because today, tonight is a full night as well, yeah. as well as Halloween. So... I think that's been pretty yeah, amazing. I mean, come on, Nimesh, if you have a costume in the back, go go get it, man. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> we wanna we wanna put on a show. Yeah, it's also oh, yeah. rare, like you know, uh, full moon two times in the same month. So huh. a very rare occurrence. Look at that. Prisha is Miss Devil tonight. Woo! Don't get scared. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, how fun. So how are you guys just staying in because of COVID and stuff? You're no, not going out, right? We are both really watching the movie with friends. Yeah. With two of my, actually my friend's friend. Okay, it's good. Like, okay. Yeah, the more the merrier. Yeah. And oh I'm God, like so fine with fun. making new friends. What's the harm? Me too, man. That's why I'm here. <laughs> yeah, that's true. By the way, what's your name? Actually, I came a little bit late, so I don't know. Sure, yeah. So um, it's Sogol. S-O-G-O-L. So Sogol. Good name. Yeah. It's unique, I think. I like yeah, unique so names. I, I hope like I would have one. You do. You do. Absolutely. There's a common been, name, but like I'm a unique person, I believe. So yeah, never mind. You better believe that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> All of you. You're as okay. unique as your fingerprints. Yeah. Yeah, Sogol apparently is like originally a Turkish name, um, but it's it's very common in Iran as well. So my grandfather named me, so my dad named me there you go yeah it was nice to meeting you anyways oh we have a long time to go prisha yeah, you're I, I got you for two hours an hour and a half yeah. <laughs> and i up until the start of the movie yeah and i hope you will have a good time with me <laughs> i will i know it already yeah um, my good. sister is like she's trying to say what are we doing <laughs> We're getting the party started. Prisha is already there. Why aren't you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she is actually, she wanted to come, but she has not applied. So now she cannot. It's kind of like no, It's okay. Fine. It's You're fine. Here. You, can, you can tell her that you can just send her the link that I sent you and you can yeah. tell her to join in. Not a problem. Okay. You can join in. <laughs> you can join in. 
you can also wear your grand uh, hair. No, it's really nice. Um, guys, this is what I like. I mean, you know, you guys are all strangers. You've come in here and it's nice to break the ice. It's nice to see all of your faces and see you smile and, and so that we can get this, you know, thing started. And again, I know as a teenager, it, it must uh, be really hard and boring sometimes to get through all of your lectures online, but hopefully we can make this a lot of fun. Um, and of course, Dr. Sogal is, is, is really passionate about what she's going to talk to you about. She is a PhD, um, you know, and, and worked really hard to make this presentation for you. We've actually done a couple of dry runs, so I, I know it's going to be amazing. So can't, please make sure that it's interactive. Stop her, you think you have a comment to make. I do know, I hope um, that we take the lead and, and sort of get the questions moving on, just like our other Harvard workshop or the early entrepreneur workshop that you've been a part of and, and get this, um, you know, session going. So I hope that the kids who have done other programs with us um, do take the lead and, and sort of other, you know, other people just follow. Um, on that note, um, any any other cool quarantine activities that uh, you guys have been doing at home? Anyone would like to share with us? Could we have cameras? Um, could you guys please turn on your cameras for the next five to seven minutes? Um, once the lecture starts, you can probably go back to switch off your cameras again. I mean, so uh, I was working on a Sorry, research I think study. The Nimish was. Anish, go ahead. Yeah. Hmm. So, like, me and my couple of friends were working on a research study. So, we were studying that uh, what do students like us feel, how the school education, education system will change after COVID 19. It's like, what hmm. changes can we expect? Like, how much uh, our class will be like more digital as compared to offline classes? So, we started that and, like, we published in a journal. It's called International Journal of Research in Social Sciences. That was a that was a really interesting, that was a really interesting activity. Congrats, Tanish! This is great. <laughs> this is amazing. Seriously, I have a nephew who is just not liking it <laughs> right now. So this is great. I I would love to give that article to him because I know a lot of us, you know just it's it's not an easy transition into the zoom world as we'll call it zoom life yeah so it's uh it's a transition and it takes a lot of more discipline and um i i think it's it's just a very different way of understanding and connecting to people and everything like that but it's possible i mean you, we're just trying to reroute our brains right now and we'll talk about that in this presentation on how to reroute your brain it takes a lot yeah. of effort too. Well, I've seen that uh, we get like we get more tired with online meetings as compared to offline meetings. Like after after a couple or two, like you just feel that uh, I'm I'm just so tired and I can't even do anything else. So, yeah, it have is a bit guys, tiring, but then you have to. Have you guys like when you go to the eye doctor? Did you know you can get one of the blue light glasses without a prescription? Mm, yeah, I know about the blue, blue light glasses, but I don't have it. Yeah, that's a great idea. I can, we can use that. Yeah, because the the mm -hmm. screen of the you know the light of the screen is what's making the headaches. Yeah, I, I, I use I use them as well. It's pretty handy. So. <laughs> yeah, it um it makes a big difference. Now I I have prescription on these, but I it's also blue light. It it helps a little, but after some time, I feel like. The front of my head is just going to explode, so <laughs> I just need to <laughs> I need to lie down and just like chill because there's a you know there's only so much screen time we can get. The weather is nicer now, right? So you guys can go out, take a walk, chill outside, yeah. or is it? I just went for a walk and came with yeah. my friend only, one of my friend only. We two were there. 
Be welcome. Man, Risha, everyone needs to be your friend. You're too cool, man. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you're, you're, pretty, you're doing some cool stuff, but okay. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, this is, guys, this everyone, funny. please, please, uh, last request. Um, if you can all switch on a camera just for a couple of minutes. Once we get the presentation started, you can all turn them off and sit back, relax, and, and listen and participate, okay? Um, on that note, um, you know, it's almost seven, Dr. Sogol, so we'd just like to welcome Dr. Sogol Humayu. She's the Assistant Director of the Master of Global Management Program and also um, Student Success for Recruitment Admission. So, and of course, very passionate about creativity. Uh, very passionate about what she's going to speak to all of you today. She spent a majority of time researching and developing some of the things that she'll talk about. Um, on that note, um, welcome everyone who's joining us from all around. Um, uh, this is the Big Red Masterclass on Creativity with Dr. Sogal Mayu. Um, you know Big Red Group is an education consulting uh, company. Uh, we do the Harvard YLC program. Some of you have done that. We have one upcoming program in January. We have an early entrepreneur program that we run that's also in the month of January. So for any other questions, any other you know, logistical things, please uh, write on the chat box, um, go visit the website at uh, www.thebigregroup.com and hopefully just like this masterclasses, uh, we'll have a lot more fun activities planned for you. And a lot more. Uh, so without further ado, I will uh, Put the spotlight on Dr. Sogo and uh, would request uh, you to take the floor and, and start with the workshop. Yeah, no, this is great. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Nimesh and Rishi and Radhika and everyone at the Big Red Group. This is so exciting. Um, for those of you who just came in, I wanted to kind of really introduce myself again. I'm Dr. Sogo Homoyun and um, I'm hailing. Um, from Phoenix, Arizona at 6.30 a.m. to speak with you guys about a topic I really, really love. And I know you love it too, which is creativity. And uh, just a little bit about myself. Um, I told you guys I, I was born and raised in Iran. I came to the U.S. Uh, when I was 18 to pursue higher education studies. And one of the reasons why I became interested in creativity is I saw um, in the times that I was working for um, a U.S. company in, in financial services is um, specifically the idea that, you know, how do we become better leaders? You know, how do we shape the future of leadership? And for me, it was about being kind. It was about being fun. It was about being um, just versatile, adaptable, and open to ideas. And I realized really quickly is that we really don't teach that as the main alpha personality. Um, right now it has more of a negative connotation. Um, and so I realized slowly is that in order to develop a leader that has really fun and creative you know, ideas and is open, to other people's fun and creative ideas, we need to do both left side and right side brain training because you know, like the left side is all about the logic and the right side is more about the creative side. And so one of the things that we're trying to do today here is to get you an introduction um, to the right side brain training. Um, maybe you've heard of these topics before, maybe not. It's going to be a good reinforcement from some of you who's already been in this space before, which that will make me even happier. But for me, it was more about getting together and really understanding that in order to even help someone believe that they're creative, right, they really have to work on that for themselves. You can't just teach creativity without believing that you're creative, right? So today what we're going to do is just going to work on our belief systems, right? Prisha just another moment ago was talking about, you know, I believe she said that word, that phrase, um, you know, and I think this is what I want to end up um, making sure that when you guys start this process of creativity, 
you're going to first need to check in with yourselves and make sure that you believe that you're creative. And we're going to debunk some of the myths and misconceptions about creativity so that there is no reason for you not to believe that everyone is capable of being creative, no matter where you're from, what background you're coming from. It's a human thing. So that said, uh, like I said, this is, yes, go ahead. Do you have a question? Your hand was raised. Actually, Actually, I don't have a question. It sounds Shai, like a you techno dance. Or, or something like Actually, that. Actually, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> doing with my sister. <laughs> I think you got you to gotta put it on the chat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, it, it's fine. It's fine. Dr. Sogul, it, 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 the floor is yours. You can share your sure, screen. Yeah. And, and we can, yeah, Jisha, go ahead and put it on the chat. We're, we're not going anywhere. I just wanted to say, let's make it as interactive as possible. <laughs> So I, um, I'm willing to stop throughout the presentation as we go along. This is not me talking for an hour and a half. That's exactly the opposite. Remember, I think what I like to honestly tell you guys is there's a difference when you have your doctorate and you were born after 1984 because you can now say you're a millennial doctor, you know, kind of professor. And that just makes this whole image 10 times more fun. So I just had to say that. Go ahead, Jisha. <laughs> All right. Just wanted to give a piece of knowledge. Yes, we are waiting to hear that piece of knowledge. Go ahead. So I, I read a lot of books. So in yes. one of my books, I actually learned that there's a difference between inspiring someone and being a leader. So as yes. you were talking, talking about a leader and it was a book its name was uh, start with why by simon sinek yes. so in that it said that to be a leader you need to be really creative plus you need to have believe in yourself because everything starts with a belief so i'm used to reading a lot of books so Actually, I've done a course on Mind Valley. It's about your brain. So, in that, I also learned that your left brain, as you say, as you said, uh, it is for if you uh, put your eyes up in the left side of your brain, you can. It is for remembering something which is which you want to remember at the moment. And if you uh, uh, take your eye eyeballs to uh, the right side of your brain and see that it helps you imagine better. That's how the brain is. I actually really love reading about brain, seeing about brain. I oh mean, man, then Jisha, you're in the time of your life for this presentation. It's all about the brain. <laughs> it's actually the only problem is that I joined this link from my sister. I actually didn't... Uh, like apply that's, that's fine okay. that's fine that's fine okay. we want no of course we, we want more and more people to join in because we want people like dr sogo to come in and and you know impart her wisdom to all of you kids so really excited dr sogo uh, and thanks yeah. jisha for sharing uh, the piece of knowledge um, and hopefully guys everyone please continue to raise your hands um, and and we'll we'll come to all of you um, Absolutely. One logistical thing, guys, um, all of you, this presentation can also be accessed through ahaslides.com backslash big red. So if you type that or if you just want to scan the QR code, which is here through your phone, we have a couple of questions on the poll and you can answer um, through that when, when the polling question comes. So just a logistical statement from my side. Dr. Sogal, all, all yours. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's great. So please go ahead and set yourself up. And once I get to the poll, we'll, uh, we'll tell you what it's all about. Um, all right. So uh, we are going to get started here. I'm going to move on in. So Jisha, didn't I tell you is all about the brain today? So the presentation that we want to talk about is connecting the dots, your brain and creativity. Do you like this? I love this picture on the right. Um, so again, guys, feel free to share some chats, whatever you guys feel comfortable with. Um, you know, 
it's, you know, I wasn't able to specifically wear a Halloween costume, but we do have a wonderful a guest in this presentation that's going to guide us through all the stuff that we're going to learn today. So get ready. All right, so I have to start with the main man, right? I can't do that. I'm talking to India tonight. Um, your beliefs, right, become your thoughts and your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions, your actions become your habits, your habits become your values, and your values become your destiny, right? This is so critical about the connection between beliefs and destiny and just in value development, right? This is uh, our ability to be able to connect with everyone and be able to really understand like, what value system do I live off by? Right. And then how do I revisit that, especially as you guys are going to be adults um, and, a, you know, really soon. It's really good to think about what you've learned from society, what you've learned from your friends and family. And now what is it that's really applicable to your life? Right. We have to constantly revisit because a lot of our values are actually shaped by the time we're four years old. And it's really not a good idea not to revisit it <laughs> again, because the way that we perceive the world at four years old, it's very different at 18. Um, so that's why I'm encouraging you guys to think about your value system, but it obviously starts with your beliefs. So today, as promised, I am going to debunk some of the concepts about creativity that you may have heard. The first one being creativity is only about art. Number two, creativity is not the most important skill in organizations. And number three, you can't become creative. And finally, we are going to wrap this up with some cool quarantine creative activities, as I want to call it that, say that three times. So ultimately, to get the party started, we want to introduce Baby Yoda. This is my Halloween gift to you guys. He's going to impart some wisdom on us tonight. See, I was, I was thinking ahead, Nimesh. Come on, you're not giving me enough props. All right. So creativity is only about art. So in the chat box, what I want you guys to do um, real quick is tell me how are you defining creativity for yourself right now? I'm very curious. What have you learned about what creativity means? And we're going to talk about this general definition that society has taught us and see what happens there. So in the chat box, type in what is your definition of creativity as we know it? Uh, may I speak? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. so uh, my definition of creativity is like that. It's the ability of like uh, having to like do mistakes in something in order to like uh, what do you say improve it better so like having the capability to do do mistakes and find something which is even better another thing that you, that you were actually doing it but like improving on things better. by doing mistakes there you go that's one creative May I see? what May else I... go ahead uh, creativity for me is basically analyzing your mistakes and bringing up constant newness to what you work, the same you work the same thing but with different methods, which will uh, basically make your work easy or give you something interesting, which would change many things for you, I guess. There you go, different methods. What else? I'm looking at the chat box here too. It looks like some are saying being innovative. Creativity is something that sets you apart from the world, the uniqueness that you have, learning new things and kind of being more productive, ability to do something, imagine ideas and implement in your life, ability to develop and express yourselves, our ideas in new ways. Great. Being able to believe ideas, others think silly or impossible. Creative is about our own work, which we made from our brain, something unique, which shows how we think. 
Let it see what else. Creativity is how you think about something differently than others. Imagine ideas and implement in your life. Inventiveness. Wonderful. I define creativity as the ability to solve the same problem with a different approach and methodology. Very nice. Creative. Capable to do mistakes in order to improve something. Creative is about our work, which we made from our brain, something unique, which shows how we think. Very nice. So what I'm gathering here is, you know, just a lot of problem solving, the ability to think in different methods outside the box. It's coming from our own brain. It's unique. Being able to do that, absolutely, this is great. Creativity is the art to express yourself in a better manner absolutely this is wonderful guys okay so in addition to all of your definitions right would you agree that a lot of just people when they talk about being creative they also associated with the arts like oh i'm good at drawing i'm good at painting you know that's why i'm creative or you know i have these tendencies to see people that specifically um, focus on uh, the ability to do something, you know, kind of artistic that way is like the only reason why they're creative, right? Or how about if it, they're extremely genius at something like a Bach or Beethoven or Einstein or Steve Jobs, right? These extreme examples that we have in society to say, wow, these are the creative people in our time, right? And we want to make this idea so grandiose that it's untainable, untouchable, right? To be able to do that, right? That's what society tells us too. This is the common knowledge that we all feel like we're getting from society, right? But today, what we're trying to understand, right, as not the society definition, but what is the reality? of creativity what is the reality that we're seeing in literature in academics also in practice what is the democratic definition of creativity what would allow creativity to be accessible and not so niche right this is very niche definitions of certain percentage of populations that may only have access to these types of things we want to erase that today. That's not the goal here. So I'm going to propose a definition and I want you guys to think about it. And it's about the idea that the production of novel and appropriate solutions to open-ended problems that have value. So a lot of people say coming up with cool new ideas is creativity, but it's only half the story. Because at the end of the day, we function in society and society wants us to know, how is that useful to me, right? How is your new idea useful to me? So coming up with great ideas and problem solving is wonderful. And then being able to share the value proposition of that particular idea is going to be the finishing part of the formula here. And so I think that's why you guys see a lot of people starting up side gigs and different things because they think they've finally found something that the society would find useful to them, right? All the YouTubers out there right now, Instagrammers, all these people that are either producing knowledge or a product or service that they think that the society needs in order for them to be so-called creative. But what's happening here is that now this is accessible. Because now people all over the world, regardless of their talents, can be creative. And that's the kind of foundation I want you guys to think about as we move along, is how we define things, the story we tell each other, is impacting our beliefs, whether we are aware of it or not. So if you feel like there's certain something that may be impacting the way you believe or think about the world, check your definitions. That's my point here, because that's probably what's affecting you, right? So think about it as we go along. So Baby Yoda is telling us myth number two is creativity is not the most important skill. 
in organizations. This is really sad, but let's see if it's true. So right now, one of the biggest, biggest professors um, that's talking about creativity, it's talking about this thing called the creative economy. It's saying nowadays in the 21st century, we just can't learn knowledge. This is not the point. We have to develop our creative side. Why? Because humans, as opposed to AI, as opposed to robots, are the source of creativity. So let's not forget our role in society. We are the creators, not the created. <laughs> so just to solidify this point. And so think about it, guys. The creative economy means that all the different topics that we're going to be learning in different disciplines that you guys are pursuing, regardless of what, whatever discipline it is, but it's now trying to find the creative aspect of it. Again, what was the definition? A novel and appropriate solution that has value, right? That's what makes it creative. So it doesn't matter that not every one of us is in a startup, but it specifically is talking about that in your field of study of interest, what are you doing to create additional problem solving plus value in it that's going to become creative for the rest of society? And this is going to be catching on even more so than ever before, because we need to still distinguish ourselves as humans to see what is our competitive advantage compared to other species. And until now, it's still creativity. So think about that. Now, and this AI is can be, yeah. Tanish, go ahead. Yeah. And AI can be really good at something which is knowledgeable. So for example, Google, Google will always be better than a human for finding answers. But the only thing that separates us is that a human can think of new methods to do something or new solutions, basically being, being created. So that's our only advantage if you really think about it, being creative. It's going to become really important. So let's do this poll. So 2015, there was a survey and it was saying, Oh, what is the top skill that you need to have just five years ago, guys? This is ridiculously a short time. And everyone said complex problem solving. But now we're in 2020. And I want to know from the QR code that you just guys scanned, or if you're looking on the top to be able to log into Big Red through the AHA slides, what and where is creativity in 2020? Is it number one? Is it number two, three, four? What is it? So we're going to take a moment for you guys to run the poll and see what you think creativity is on the list today. Uh, ma'am? Yeah. Uh, ma'am, actually, I had a question. So yes, like you said, that creativity is quite, uh, people are quite creative these times. So I had a question. So if there's a lot of competition among people for creativity, so how are we going to actually measure creativity and determine which person is much more creative than the other one? Because like I am interested in cars and if I get a project related to cars, I'll be able to perform better than a project related to football. So in that sense. Sure. But think about this question before you answer that question yourself is why are you comparing yourself? Because what is happening here right now, and this is something taught by society, is that we have to compare ourselves to define success. You know, what is the bottom line goal here? that we're trying to accomplish. Because at the end of the day, if you really think about it, it's about the fulfillment of what we are trying to do in our own lives. Let that sink in for a moment, because unfortunately, this is the problem that we're dealing with right now, comparison. And it's not about that. It's really about understanding how we're going to test our limits. And if we're looking at X, Y, Z, it's only to extend our own limits. 
So if you're a competitive person like I am, I get it. You're like, no, I've got to read better because it's a competition against myself. That's the bottom line that we really have to think about. And I always tell my students, think about it. Place yourself, you're 70 years old, 80 years old, and you're looking back at your life right now, right? And you're asking, what did I do? What did I offer this world? What was I able to contribute? Right? And did I live my life to the fullest? To the, all the capabilities, all the talents that I have been able to bring to this world to share with my friends and family and strangers. Was I able to do that? Or was I caught up in the rat race? Was I caught up in just because I need to have the bigger car, the bigger house, the bigger this? What was the goal here, right? That's going to be a point to think about. I know culturally, believe me, I grew up with that type of mindset where I need to have the power, the status, the prestige. I need to look this way, I need to look that way. I need to have all these superficial check marks that I need to complete in order to be quote unquote successful. But then I got tired and then I realized I don't want to play the game anymore. I really don't. I just want to provide value the way and to the extent, the level I can, whatever talent level I have. But that's why I'm up on Saturday morning at 6 a.m. teaching you guys these topics because why else would I want to be waking up 6 a.m. in the morning, right? On a Saturday. This is deep, guys. I, I know this is deep. This is not something I expect you guys to change overnight. I know we live in a society where it says something else. And this crazy professor from the US, she's like, oh, it's easy for you to say these things. Yes, I get it. I get it. I know all the arguments. Believe me, I was in your shoes, all that stuff. But all I can say is do what I did. Test the theory. That's all I say, because if you guys are going to go into the creative process, I would only say test and experiment on yourself and see if anything changes inside of you. Because what really happened to me, just to kind of combine all the, you know, years, I specifically 18 years from 18 to now, which is 36 years old, combined together in two minutes that I want to share with you, the major, major difference that I feel is peace with myself. No one can take it away from me. No one can add to it. No one can subtract from it. Nothing. This is the type of peace I have because I'm okay with who I am. I'm okay with the extent of knowledge of level that I am sharing with you guys today. And it you know, if it looks better than some others, great. If it doesn't look better than some others, no problem either. But for me, it's really just about sharing my value in the best and most really fun way I can share. And that's going to be the mindset transition that I hope to really help people understand because a lot of us are kind of still stuck in the rat race and we're like wasting time. Whereas if you think about it, you know, speaking of our brain and our bodies and stuff like that, biologically, the most optimal energy level that a human body has is only between 20 to 40 years of age. And then after that, we naturally will break down, ladies and gentlemen, we'll naturally break down whether we want it or not. So the question is, what are we doing during this time frame? during this optimal amount of energy that we have? That's going to be the main question I asked myself because my mentor told me and asked me that question. Do you wanna be stuck on, you know, Harry, Carrie, and Sarah? Or do you wanna be stuck on actually developing and saying, look, I'm a rat race against myself. I have limited time. I don't know what I specifically wanna do at the beginning, but I wanna do everything that I love and I'm passionate about because that's the only thing that's going to be the main juice for my motivation. If anything is coming from external, it'll be short-lived. It's pretty profound stuff. 
I was not supposed to go down this direction, so I'm going to reel it back <laughs> to the pole. Just a moment, because you asked, you asked a good question. I hope I hope I've I'm spinning some some wheels in your head, though. That was a nice TED. That was a nice TED talk. So oh. funny is that just today, me and my mom were just discussing about my idea of success and stuff, and I just realized in the past fourteen years. I was so obsessed with productivity and being very optimal and just using every second, not wasting one second, that I sort of forgot to kind of just chill and just live and just think about what I really like rather than what other people want for me. And I don't know, many people have this when they're 28, maybe they have it when they're 60, maybe they have it on their deathbeds or something. But I am so glad I had it right now. And I, I like, I don't know, previously I sort of assumed that you have a final form, but right now I've, I've sort of come to the, um, I've sort of come to peace with the fact that there is no final form, form. you are going to be evolving and changing depending on everything around you, everything inside you. So just, just don't worry about the future, don't live in the past, just be in the present and just see where the flow takes you. So that was very profound. Well, Diyasha, that is... Thank you. thank you for sharing that. That's, that's a very profound. I mean, I'm glad that you're able to decipher all of this at, at such a young age. But yeah, thank you for sharing. Anyone else want to share? Yeah, go ahead. Actually, the way the thing you said that even you are all about society think will think that they will think that even I used to be like that before the lockdown and I realized in the lockdown that what you need to do is not to compete with others. What you need to do is compete with yourself and always you need to see how I develop today or the next week or this week or next month, how you're developing yourself to be the better version of version of yourself and the, be the best you can be in your life. Because the time period you have, you think it's a really long, but it's actually really short. You never know what can happen and what... Because in lockdown, many people who have had COVID would have thought that there are a lot of time, but there actually wasn't a lot of time. There are so many of their dreams that they wanted to achieve, but they actually didn't achieve. And that feels so sad that anybody can cry on that. Because I actually do, I could actually cry right now, but I think crying isn't a good thing. You need to stay happy and make others happy. That's, that's also profound, Jisha, seriously. This is I would like to share one thing. Yes, go ahead. Uh, basically, I am a 12th study student. I am an IIT aspirant. So it's highly competitive stage right now, for, and at, at least for me. So I have learned one thing from my past one and a half, uh, one and a half year experience that uh, rather than destroying, rather than pulling down your competitors, you try and work on yourself and develop yourself to get better. Because if you pull down someone, it is destruction. But if you develop yourself, it is creation. It is always better. Yeah. Simply said, guys, every one of us is the solution to a future problem. Let that sink in. Every one of us is a solution to a future problem. And if you don't develop yourself, the society, the world is going to miss out on you. And do you really want that? Because you may not see it now. It's kind of like a seed underneath dirt. You don't see it, but with the right water and sunshine and food, what happens, right? That's what nature teaches us. Some of the things are just not visible, but when they're worked on, then you blossom in different ways that you can possibly imagine. And for me, I told my friends and colleagues just today, yesterday, I said, I was a late bloomer. 
my flower was stubborn, did not want to come out, but I believed in myself because I really thought there's something there. There's absolutely something there for us to be able to move forward with all that stuff. So anyways, uh, my boss is telling me to move on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so let's go to the poll. So let's, uh, let's see what the results are. How do I look at the, the results? So, what, what do we... Dr. Sobel, you're going to go to the next slide and that's when they will be able to answer the poll. Which yeah, is, I wasn't able to answer this one. You have to okay. go to the next slide and then they will... Right. Did everyone vote? No, they will only be able to vote once you go to the next slide. Yeah. Okay, I'm moving. I'm moving. There you go. So, start the poll. Guys are... Yeah, perfect. So, uh, 10 is the highest right in this scale uh, one will be actually you're right it should be <laughs> one uh -huh. actually would be the highest guys so sorry one, about that. Right. and 10 will be the least uh, yeah one three eight ten all right oh we got a four Anybody else? We got 14, 17. All right. Last minute. All right. So let's drum roll, please, Dimesh. Let's see. Oh, what happened here? Everybody, f I fooled you guys. I know, I know. I just, that's what I do. But hey, come on, it's close. That just means it's still in the top three. You all win. So yes, as you can see, the creativity skill is going all the way up, right? It's really going to be important for us how to figure out how to do and develop this critical thinking and creativity, right? Left side, right side brain training that we're doing here. So this was a really complicated graph from the US Department of Labor that I thought it would be so fantastic to show in a more fun way. And basically, if you think about it, the blue green line that you guys see on the top, right, is ultimately the jobs that use your mind and then the, um, the green, yeah, the green uh, line on the bottom, it says jobs that use your muscle, right? So what kind of conclusion are we getting out of this? Does someone want to tell me? White jobs versus white collar jobs. Absolutely. So that means this is not as important, unfortunately. It still exists, you know, with your, you know, jobs that use your muscle, manufacturing, labor jobs, all those you know, different types of activities, but what's really gaining momentum is the jobs that use your mind. And especially when it comes to creative um, ideas and activities and stuff like that, we're all using our minds, right? That's what's happening. And especially um, around the world, um, I can only imagine that this is going to pick up tremendously in the next five years because of the Zoom life that we have to live in, right? That's basically expediting this whole process here. So it's a thing, guys, and governments are predicting it. And we now have to get on board because, you know, if, if, think of yourself five years from now, right? Where are you going to be? What are you going to do? How I'm giving you, the not me, through the big red group, we're giving you the big competitive advantage to have the secret sauce now so that by the time five years come along, you're way ahead of others who are just waking up to this idea, right? Because we just gave you the secret, the secret's out. And now we just have to develop and develop and develop as fast as possible. And that's why, you know, groups like the Big Red are so important in society. All right, so someone was talking about education systems, Mr. Tanish, and I was talking about it in this particular soul, right, that this is a problem and not only in US and in India, 
And this is the, the survey to prove it. Look up at the bottom, 71%. Now, of course, this is US respondents, but what did they say? Creativity is stifled by the education system. So do you feel validated, Tanish? I feel like you do. So yeah. absolutely, this is, this is what I mean. 55%, only half only think that they're creative. Why? Why only half? And 44% say only that they are living up to their creative potential. Why? Why are we so low? This is 2020. We have Instagram. What, why are we not living up to our creative potential? That's a problem. And I think gentlemen. most of the people who are actually creative, they don't think themselves as creative. So most of the people are creative, but they just don't realize it. Yeah, that's true. I know one of my friends like that. Full circle, guys. We just came full circle, Tanish, with that comment yeah. about belief systems. Now you can see, yeah. woo, right where we need to be, right? That's next on Yoda's list. All right, I'm going to use my awesome team here uh, to tell us a little bit about the brain and about learning. Because remember, creativity is a skill, right? But since I love to introduce different voices into my mode of teaching, I'm going to show you a couple of videos. And it, the first video is gonna really talk about, maybe you've heard of it, growth versus fixed mindset, right? Why and how we learn is going to really impact us, but it's a really cool video, it's gonna be awesome. And then the second video that we're also going to learn about is about the whole concept of how and why the brain can be rewired. So if someone says, I can't be creative, ooh, now you have a scientific argument on why they are full of it. And that is absolutely incorrect. So I'm going to uh, make sure we play it. And if there's like sound problems, just tell us on the chat. Um, so we feel good about the fact that you can hear it and stuff. If you operate in the world of sports or education, you've most likely heard of the term growth mindset. It's a concept that's sweeping the world and changing and improving the way that people learn. This powerful idea has been pushed forward by Stanford professor and best-selling author Carol Dweck. For decades, I've been studying why some people succeed while people who are equally talented do not. And over the years, I've discovered that people's mindsets play a crucial role in this process. These mindsets are really important when it comes to learning. Her work has uncovered two ways of thinking about skill and development. Some people have what's called a fixed mindset. They believe that skills and intelligence are set and you either have them or you don't. That some people are just naturally good at things while others are not. In short, they believe that you are not in control of your abilities. Other people have what's called a growth mindset, and they believe that skills and intelligence are grown and developed. So people who are good at something are good because they built that ability, and people who aren't are not good because they haven't done the work. In short, they believe that you are in control of your abilities. Really, the core idea here is people with a fixed mindset believe that skills are born. People with a growth mindset believe that skills are built. People with a fixed mindset believe that you can't or don't have to learn and grow. And people with a growth mindset do believe in their capacity to learn and grow. Dweck's work shows that mindsets have a major influence on people's ability to learn and that people who utilize this growth mindset tend to learn, grow, and achieve more over time than people with a fixed. Growth mindset really creates a solid foundation for great learning. And because of its power, companies, sports teams, and schools from all over the world are implementing this into their culture.
Over the years, we've worked with a ton of amazing groups to help instill this within their culture. We're talking Fortune 500 companies, lots of colleges, lots of high schools, and even a few prisons who are working to build growth mindset into their reentry program. What I'm trying to say is this is bigger than one study or one TED talk. This is a powerful concept that's helping lots of different people in lots of different places. Now, the reason it's so important and powerful is it is the foundation for learning. And if you understand this, no matter what you build on that foundation, it will be more powerful. But to really implement and run with this concept, we need to zoom in and look at the nuts and the bolts of it. We need to talk about what it actually is and how it actually works. Through years of work, Dweck and her team have uncovered sort of the defining characteristics of the two mindsets. This table really illustrates the contrast between the two. The first big characteristic we need to talk about is belief. Again, people with this fixed mindset believe that skills are born and therefore they can't or don't have to learn. People with a growth mindset believe that skills are built, therefore they can learn. The second major characteristic is focus. People in a fixed mindset tend to focus on performance and outcomes and results. In other words, their main focus, their main concern becomes how they look, and more specifically, to not look bad. People with a growth mindset tend to focus more on the process of getting better, of learning and growing. These mindsets and these characteristics have a huge influence on our ability to learn. And now we start to see why. Let's look at like the four key ingredients to growth. Effort, challenges, mistakes, and feedback. The research shows that when somebody is in a fixed mindset, they look at effort as a negative thing, as something that you do when you're not good enough. They also don't see the value or purpose of putting in effort. They've been shown to back down and avoid challenging situations. They get really discouraged and worked up when they make mistakes. And when somebody with a fixed mindset receives feedback from a parent, a teacher, a coach, or a friend, they get defensive, they take it personally, and they don't see the value or purpose of the feedback. So in other words, people with this fixed mindset actually avoid and shy away from these four key ingredients to growth. Dweck and her team have shown that when people enter a growth mindset, they look at effort as a useful thing, as an important part of the learning process. They're actually more likely to embrace challenges and persevere and work through them. They see mistakes as learning opportunities, and when they receive feedback, they actually appreciate it and use it. Now, the fascinating and important part of this table is to connect the dots between these key characteristics of the two mindsets and our actions and behaviors towards learning. Let's look at the fixed mindset side first. They actually shy away from putting in effort because they don't believe that they can change. They give up when they're met with a challenge and things get hard because they don't want to look bad. So in their mind, the challenge becomes a threat and because they don't believe that they can change. They hate making mistakes and are discouraged by mistakes because if you're making mistakes, you're not looking good. And they don't see the value or purpose of feedback because they don't believe in their capacity to grow. So in one way or the other, every single one of these actions is a byproduct of these characteristics. And the same is true on the growth mindset side. They see the value and purpose of effort because they believe in their capacity to grow. They're more likely to take on a challenge and persevere through it because they believe that they can grow and because they're focused on the opportunity to do that. So they frame a challenge as an opportunity to get better. And by focusing on the process and believing in their capacity to grow, they're more likely to understand how important mistakes are in this process. And when they receive feedback from a parent, teacher, coach, or friend, they're more receptive to this because their focus is on getting better and because they believe that that information can help them grow and they have the capacity to do so. Two key points with this table. First, you're not just one or the other. This is a spectrum. And in different times, on different days, in different situations, you might be in a growth, while other times you'll slip into a fix. But now that we understand how it works and we understand the characteristics, you can start to identify where you're at on the spectrum and, more specifically, the cause of that mindset. Is it our beliefs or is it our focus? Second, yes, these actions of learning are great, and they're definitely behaviors that we want, 
but we have to understand that they come from our mindsets. So to create a great culture for learning, it's about zooming in on beliefs and focus and creating a real growth mindset, which is one of the most important things we can do. All right. So there we go. Growth versus fixed mindset with a dash of lines. <laughs> so what did we what did we learn a little bit about this video? Talk to me. We actually learned that the people with fixed mindsets, they never think that learning something new that they don't know is useful. Whereas the people with growth mindset, they think that learning new things is good for them and they try developing it and the uh, appreciation or the, the things that they, the people don't appreciate about their artwork the people with growth mindset are not affected by it and they actually are grateful about it they feel gratitude about it that they are learning something when people are uh, appreciating or not appreciating and they are uh, getting to learn new things every day in their life whereas the people with fixed mindsets are totally opposite they think totally opposite about it and according to my knowledge i think that people with fixed mindsets are they actually procrastinate a lot they have that procrastinating distracting monkey in them which keeps on distracting them until there's a there, there's some kind of panic but that it isn't important that there would always be a panic so that you start doing that particular thing so people okay. need to have a growth mindset not a fixed mindset anyone agree or disagree agree i would totally agree, agree. Yeah. And one thing that I liked about this video that in the end they talked about how this is like this is not black and white. It's a spectrum because like people could be like different in some things or the other. For example, like I could be having a fixed mindset in one particular activity, or ha and have a growth mindset in some of something something else. So that's great because people are fluid. Absolutely. But yeah, overall like growth that. mindset is the way to go. Absolutely. No, it makes a big difference because if you think about it, we can't stop, you know, constantly checking ourselves, you know, but we can at least be aware and see if we can modify and catch ourselves, right? The moments that we feel like we're going into a fixed mindset mode. So I hope that when you are going to see um, certain statements or things or actions and stuff like that right you're you're seeing that you know you specifically are getting the opportunity to be able to catch yourself if anything so that way that if you're on the spectrum you can say oh you know disha is going to be like nope i'm not going there i'm doing a fixed mindset and I don't want that right now. I'm, I'm trying to fix something or learn something or do something. And all these thoughts are coming into my head that's preventing me from growing or thinking that I can learn. And that's really what we really just have to be self-aware about. This is, you know, belief systems at the end of the day are about self-awareness and being able to help us guide our actions during the critical times that we particularly need, right? So. So the next video that we're going to show is going to be about the brain and how it is rewired and how we want to particularly, um, you know, learn something specifically and what our brain naturally does when we do it. And guys would request everyone, as, as Namish pointed out, please don't annotate on the screen. Uh, that'd be great. Thank you. We just have a last video for two minutes and then we'll get back to Dr. Solo. Thank you. Not so long ago, many scientists believed that the brain did not change after childhood, that it was hardwired and fixed by the time we became adults. But recent advances in only the last decade now tell us that this is simply not true. The brain can and does change throughout our lives. 
It is adaptable, like plastic. Hence, neuroscientists call this neuroplasticity. How does neuroplasticity work? If you think of your brain as a dynamic, connected power grid, there are billions of pathways or roads lighting up every time you think, feel, or do something. Some of these roads are well-traveled. These are our habits, our established ways of thinking, feeling, and doing. Every time we think in a certain way, practice a particular task, or feel a specific emotion, we strengthen this road. It becomes easier for our brains to travel this pathway. Say we think about something differently, learn a new task, or choose a different emotion. We start carving out a new road. If we keep traveling that road, our brains begin to use this pathway more, and this new way of thinking, feeling, or doing becomes second nature. The old pathway gets used less and less and weakens. This process of rewiring your brain by forming new connections and weakening old ones is neuroplasticity in action. The good news is that we all have the ability to learn and change by rewiring our brains. If you have ever changed a bad habit, or thought about something differently, you have carved a new pathway in your brain and experienced neuroplasticity firsthand. With repeated and directed attention towards your desired change, you can rewire your brain. All right. Who had heard of neuroplasticity before today? I have. Yeah? One of the courses I, I learned about, about the brain. Yeah, so it's it's Actually, a thing you guys are familiar with. I yeah. I know a lot about the brain thing because in twenty twenty I've been into the brain thing a lot. I stopped does. procrastinating in lockdown before lockdown. <laughs> I procrastinated like oh my god. I know, but I hey. I, yeah, I want to know why are we using the word plasticity here, like new neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity, right? It's about uh, the flexibility that uh, our brain has, right? And that's basically what we're specifically talking about is that our brains are super flexible, right? And they, uh, the neuro aspect or the synapses, right? That we create in our brains when we are developing a thought that turns into a habit, right? And so what we're really trying to do here is that Basically, the argument is, is that we can change the synapses that are happening with the new thoughts mm -hmm. that we're entering the brain, and that's creating a brand new route within our brain to be able to develop a new skill or a new habit. Yeah, so the point is, is that a lot of people think that they can't become creative, right? Maybe you were not good at drawing when you were a baby or, you know, uh, riding a bicycle and all that stuff. And it's gone into your head because you didn't get external feedback from mom, dad, sister, brother, whatever strangers that, oh, you know, Jisha, you're so good at this, right? You didn't get that external feedback. It may translate into your brain that you may not be creative because that is possible, right? We usually do things when we get some sort of external feedback. And that's why I'm saying that just because you didn't get it, right? It doesn't mean that it doesn't exist for you to rewire your brain. And then maybe as an adult, that's like me, like that's maybe when your talents flourish. It doesn't matter if it, I didn't, you know, flourish at, I don't know, 10 or 12 or something like that. But the so point about, is, is that never lose mindset. that belief. Go ahead. Yeah, all about the growth mindset. So you just never give up. You think that you believe that you can do. Yeah, because there's got to be a reason why you're being attracted to something, if you think mm -hmm. about it. At the end of the day, right? If you like cars, if you like studying, if you like whatever, right? What is it that's really attracting you? Because it's got to be something within you right? You know that expression, it takes one to know one? Yeah, exactly. That's, bas that's basically what we're talking about here. That means it cannot be outside of you. That means the seed or the synapsis, right? Absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. Very well said. Thank you, Sanvi. 
So I think this is what is really being discussed here, guys, is that just because you can't see it right now doesn't mean it doesn't exist. But the only sign externally that we have right now is the mutual attraction that we have towards uh, some of our passion and hobbies. And we have to ask ourselves, why are we becoming interested? Because whether we want to or not, there is this wonderful book called Discover Your Strengths. And it's saying that during our teenage years, from four years old and onwards, right, we're developing all of these particular talents that naturally we are coming into the world with. And of course, because of our habits and our activities and practices, we're developing it. But the cool part is what will happen, especially by our early 20s, is that we will lose half of those synapses connections. And then we specialize naturally, biologically. Isn't that so cool how our body naturally does that, whether we're aware of it or not? Yeah. So the idea, right, is that you got to, you got to keep going because your body is already saying, look, Jisha likes, you know, this. And she, if she continues to develop it because of that external attraction that was the sign right? Our cultures are all about signs. <laughs> and I'm giving you guys the sign of how to detect it. This is the sign. Because why would you not, why, then, then the argument is, then why are you not attracted to cars? Why are you not attracted to this, right? Like, what's the psycho, you know, the, the scientific reason for that? I or maybe you might be attracted to cars. It's just that even not you are not exposed to that kind of experience right now. Like if you just go deeper into that, you might get you know interested in cars, for example. I'm trying to see if I want to go into metaphysics right now. <laughs> so I'm going to say you're right. Exposure is a consideration. But just because you're not exposed to that particular thing in your life doesn't mean you're at a disadvantage. Because at the end of the day, life is all encompassing and it's going to show you the things that are, you were supposed to see. So we're just going to leave it to that. So don't feel like you're missing out. You're going to get exposed to the right things at the right time. Yeah. I wanted to say that I also had an experience. Uh, in, uh, I Like the bicycle one only actually the exact thing. Like uh, I, I was not able to ride a bicycle for a month, I guess the uh, without wheels one i was not able to ride it then I, I one time i just gave it up my mom helped me and my best friend who lives nearby she helped me and she motivated me and the day my mom was not there only me and her was there and she was making me teach about how to cycle now and that day only i learned it like in just a minute and i was so like that we need to like we need to try hard if you want to accomplish something we cannot just leave it in the between or anything yeah i mean i'm telling you guys so let's let's do a little test of your skills um how about this one tell uh someone can raise their hand or shout it out is this a fixed or growth mindset statement i am not good at this it's a fixed, fixed, fixed. I mean, it depends. Like, at at what point are you speaking this? So, like, for example, like, even if you have a growth mindset, you know, even after trying like a thousand times, you like, there's a chance that you you still are not good at at something. That's not possible because people with growth no. mindset think the if they are doing something bad, they always think good about it. That means it's probably fixed mindset. But sometimes it's important to be practical also. Like you cannot end, uh, waste your entire life on doing something which you are not able to do. Why? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's not about like being something good or bad. It's, not, it's just that being yeah. good at something. So like mastering something. It's like... like it, uh, I it depends on person to uh, person. Like I'm, I I'll, I'll, I will not be great like, at Just everything. think practically. You waste your entire life in doing something. At the end of your life, you are not able to do this. Then what's the point? Okay, guys. Um, just just for you know logistical purposes, I'm going to step <laughs> in. Please, uh, 
please raise your hand and and then once you do that we'll come to you and and no uh, we're not really encouraging any cross questioning or cross answering uh so dr so good you could sort of take care of that well it was a natural byproduct to this oh. particular question because it is you know i i can say maybe we're all correct right why because it all depends on the spectrum and the place and positioning of our lives where we're coming from so really is there a right or wrong answer and like one of our friends said it depends right and so let's think of this next one is this fixed or growth mindset when i make a mistake i will learn from it and get better this is a growth, growth, mindset. growth mindset growth, growth mindset. mindset it's a growth growth mindset yeah that that a was kind of clear is this fixed or growth mindset i will succeed if i put effort into it Growth. Uh, growth. Growth. Mindset. Mindset. growth. It's a growth, 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 growth mindset. And then finally, maybe going back to our previous argument, is this a fixed or growth mindset? This is too hard. <laughs> It's basically a half said. statement. It's half a statement. Yeah, it could be yeah. fixed. This is too hard, but I could do it. It's a growth it's mindset. Growth. Some people can be some seriously good lawyers here. It this is great. <laughs> It depends think, we can do it 75 percent fixed but 30 percent growth yeah. <laughs> okay we got some data people no. too. <laughs> you're very critical about your thoughts you could have state when you're being you're critically analyzing something you could have statements like i am not very good at this but i will be so it's ultimately it's all the spectrum on context. yeah it's spectrum again all right all right i still accept that answer absolutely yeah things can become great too but was all it right. so good was it uh, this is too hard is a fixed mindset right just to well end. actually is it is it nimesh if you if you say <laughs> that it's too because all i can say is i'm open to perspectives if one can argue it appropriately and i have to say the kids that showed up here today are, are arguing it appropriately Okay. I mean, it depends on like, at what stage of life are you like saying that exactly. same question. Dep it depends on the condition in which you are. Like, yeah, the circumstances really matter. Valid. That's valid. Yeah. That's correct. That's correct. Okay, that brings uh, to one of my favorite games now. And at this point, guys, what we're going to do is to try to swap, uh, you know, um, Dr. Sogul is going to take two volunteers. Um, yes. Dr. Sogul, why don't you take away? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So guys, the the brainy version of the presentation is over. So now we're going to do a little activity. Are you guys ready? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, yes. yes ma'am. Okay. okay. So, if some of you who may or may not have done improv, it's one of my favorite games as well. And so what we're going to do here specifically is I'm going to pick on random people, and so if you, especially if you haven't spoken until now, so get ready. And we're going to be the two first volunteers to go to the first round of what is called the Yes And Game. Yay! So let me take a look at your lovely names. Let's see what we have in store for you. So first runner up that I see here today is Ayushi. I'm seeing you, so you're gonna be our first volunteer. Uh, so let's see what what other people I have. Yeah, don't turn off your cameras just because I don't see you. I have you on chat too, so <laughs> don't think you can get away from me. Whoever is going to be the volunteer, I'll we'll put them on spotlight as well. But please make sure you turn on your camera. So Ayushi, please do that um, if you can. Yeah, Ayushi's already there. Yeah, he's there. Um, how about let's see what we're looking. How about Asmi? Asmi, come on up. Turn on that camera. All right, perfect. All right, so let's take a look at the screen. Basically what I'm trying to have you guys do is that um, Ayushi is gonna say the first statement and then the first statement is, we are going on vacation. And then Asmi is basically going to continue that statement by saying yes and, and then adding another statement. And then Ayushi is going to come back and also say yes and, and also add to that particular statement. And we're going to go back and forth with this yes and a few more times. 
so that we can actually basically see how this conversation is going to evolve and we to what to it make extent. Up. Um, yes, you have to make it we up. That's the purpose of improv. Ma'am, that's quite tough. Could you repeat? Could you repeat it again? I'm, I'm a little. Yeah. Unclear. So the first person, which is you, Ayushi, you're going to say the first statement, which is, "I want. We are going on vacation, right? You're going to just going to say that." And then the second person, uh, which is us, me, is going to say yes, and and then she's going to complete the statement and continue it. Then whatever she says, Ayushi, you're going to top it off with saying yes and da 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 da, right? And you guys are going to go back and forth, topping it off to see how we develop this particular process. I promise it has a point. At the end of the day, this is not just a game; it's a point, a game with a point. So ultimately, Ayushi, take us away. Okay, um, we are going on a vacation. Um, yes, and we are going to have a party out there. Uh, yes, and we're going to leave tomorrow for the Maldives. No, I mean, uh, I'm supposed to, I'm, I'm to... Uh, you have to say I'm yes and. Yeah, keep it, you got to continue yes and. Okay, yes, and uh, okay. I'll ho I hope to have a party. And we're exactly. hoping to bring a lot of friends. Oh, yes, and I'm very excited to visit the beaches there. Yes, and um, I was hoping for some loud music. That's all I got to find. Oh, I keep going. Oh. <laughs> I'm not having fun on this. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, um, yes, and I really want to try out the cuisine oh, um, there. Yes, and uh, the food, I guess it will be very good and the lighting and stuff like that. Yes, and I can't forget to pack a swimsuit. <laughs> good job, Thank guys. You. Round of applause for our volunteers here. <laughs> this is good. This is good. All right. So I need now two more volunteers to go to the next round here. So I'm looking at my participants and I'll explain the instructions. Can I have uh, Ritvika as one of our volunteers here today? Turn on your camera if you haven't already done so. And I haven't heard from, let's see, Sinu? Sinu, can you turn on your camera? Do we have Sinu in the house? Inu. Okay, it's Inu and Ritvika. Okay, perfect. We got him. All right, so um, the first person. I still haven't heard from Sinu yet. Sinu. Oh no, Sinu's not there? Okay, let's try. Let's see. Uh, let's see. What was. How about Deep? Let's talk to Deep. Deep, where are you? <laughs> Deep was sleeping. <laughs> All right. Oh, no. So I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm pulling your leg. Um, okay. So Deep, I need you to say this first statement, uh, which is, I think there is a new park opening up. I think there is a new park opening up. Perfect. And then Ritsvika, you're going to say no, but, and, and then Deep, you're going to continue that no, but, and then extend the ex uh, conversation. Go ahead, Ritsvika. No, but. No, but there is no equipment that uh, for children under 15 years. No, but it's still good I'm for walking. I'm a little bit nervous. No, no it's fine. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. No, but there are not here. Go ahead. No, no but no, there but. are. Yeah, yeah, continue. Aye. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Read speaker. Go ahead. No, but there are no gym equipments there too. No, but the park really doesn't need gym equipment. No, but there are also no no trees and uh, plants there too. No, but basically a park always has a tree and a plant. <laughs> Read speaker, you can go out and slap them. 
<laughs> All right, one more, nothing. <laughs> Ma'am, no, but the park is built on a. What does it mean, by Shamshan? Oh, on a graveyard. Yeah, yeah. Graveyard. Graveyard, graveyard, yeah. Graveyard. It's gra no, but graveyard. I don't believe in all this. Uh, <laughs> no, but it is far. It is too far. <laughs> no, but it's still okay. We could buy. A, we could use a cab. <laughs> no, but there is no money at all with me. <laughs> no, but I have. <laughs> all right, round of applause, guys. <laughs> good, job, good job. Good job. Really, yeah. Really good cool. job, it's Vikai. See, it wasn't that hard. You came up with ideas to argue against deep. <laughs> so, it. Oh, you're on mute, Rituka. What are you saying? Mm, really All right, let's do another round because I think you guys are really good at this. But I want to solidify my point here. So let's take a look at. Go, uh, go. Let's see, uh, where is my list here? Okay, let's take a look here. So, Mishti, you're gonna be number one. Yes. And uh, let's see, Adyasha, you ha uh, we're gonna put number two. So, Mishti, you're gonna, there's like three different questions here. So I'm just gonna pick one. How about this? I just made an app. And Adyushi is going to say yes and, and we're going to go from there back and forth. I just made an app. Yes, and I applaud your initiative. Yes, and I'm grateful for the help you uh, provided. Yes, and I'm very proud of you for coming up with such, an, such a genius idea. Yes, and I am grateful for you, uh, grateful to have you by my side when I achieve this. <laughs> yes, and I have literally nothing to say against that. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, good job, guys. Good job. <laughs> let's go to the next uh, one with our nose. Uh, let's see. So how about this? Um, let's take a look at our volunteers here one more time. Where did everyone go off camera? Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> so let's take a look. Where's my list? Uh, there we go. Um, all right. So let's see. How about Yash? Is Yash in the house? And then we can take a look at uh let's see we did ask me did ask me talk no no ask me didn't talk yes, yet so okay. yes you did okay yeah. um let's see what well let's go Ananya? with Ananya yeah or? go ahead yeah let's go with Tanish Tanish and Yash yeah, yeah. all right so is is Yash there okay perfect so uh, for our, our first statement here, uh, Tanish, you can stop, uh, say, stop right there. You are not leaving this house dressed like that. Stop right there. You're not leaving the, this house dressed like that. All right, Yash, and you're going to say no, but. Okay. Nobody? I think we don't have Yash. We don't have Yash? Okay, uh, Yash. Ananya, can you, can you hear us? I, yes, I can. Okay, so why don't, Ananya, why don't you go with, with, with the thing? Tanish, could you start again and then Ananya would respond? Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Stop right there. You're not leaving this house dressed like that. Can you start, Tanish? Yeah, yeah. I said stop right there. You're not leaving this house dressed like that. Hello, Kaiba. I'm wearing a killing dress tonight and you're asking me to stop. Nobody just cannot leave the, this bad house like that. I don't like that. We are late for a party and I think you should like, you should agree with okay, what I've so, uh, uh, so I'm going to stop you there, um, Ananya. Uh, Anya, you, what you have to do is you have to start with a no and then begin your sentence, right? No, but. No, okay. but. 
but i was speaking again so that like i was like i told i'm giving that dress and you just can't you know you just can't stop me so that is like a no that is being negative no you got to say it you got to say the words okay okay okay, okay. yeah um, no tanish uh, last try let's give the third try tanish why don't you start again <laughs> yeah all right stop right there third time you're not leaving this house dressed like that no i'm going i'm not going to change again i'm wearing i'm already wearing a killing dress tonight uh no your your dress in toilet paper you cannot leave this house like that uh, i think i've dressed better than you so no but no but <laughs> no no i'm i'm dressed better than no but no but how can toilet paper be better than a t-shirt Mm, no i don't think uh, like i don't think i think it's halloween and you can wear anything so oh that's the end of that statement thank you so much <laughs> man tanish you're nice <laughs> so i i i, mean, I, 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 I want to argue with you kind of thing, yeah. <laughs> absolutely guys no but seriously just to kind of think about the statements that you guys heard um from each other and really give yourselves a round of applause for all the courage that it took to be able to speak in front of a bunch of strangers so i'm really proud of you guys seriously it's not easy especially in these types of zoom dynamics let alone in person so think about the statements that you guys heard between um our different participants when the yes and came about right versus the no but right which one of you think had more of a positive connotation a positive vibe to it what was what you know which one do you think had that type of positivity in it yes but. yes 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 ones. but Yes, but <laughs> I love it. Um, yes, and right because it was whether you liked, you know, you wanted to or were conscious or not. You're supporting each other, even though you may not be in full agreement, but you're supporting each other in some shape or form by sh sharing all these particular topics with each other, right? But the no, but had like, like the conversation was just kind of going downhill and everything like that. So the yes, ma'am. No, yeah. but it's too argumentative. Yeah, it just sounds <laughs> like you're fighting. But like, even if it was it's quite like somebody is still learning <laughs> for a very good debate, it would make for a very good debate kind of thing. Just discussing. Yeah. If it was well, very positive, though, not yeah. like, I mean, not that both parties are at ease with each other and nobody's affected too much by the negative condemnations, I guess. Then it's really easy to think of a yes and statement rather than a no but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it yeah. makes us more more positive. Makes a difference. So think of this now, guys, when you're talking to your friends, family, and even strangers about when you're coming up with ideas in the creative process. Do you see how much language plays a part here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're more supportive, you can get more ideas out of people. being supportive is, is like key for brainstorming i think so you, you have something to say please go on no i didn't i used the mic is your, your hand was raised okay <laughs> no problem yeah, yeah so this is going to be the most really interesting skill to catch yourself every time you're talking to your friend or something i still do it i was like oh no and you know see i'm totally putting some negative vibes out with the way that I'm talking to my friend or my colleague or my boss or whoever my mom my dad and all that stuff because I keep on saying no 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 you know but I'm not I'm not thinking right to to say like how do I support how how would I be able to still you know show support but still maybe offer alternative viewpoints you know as we're thinking about stuff or ideas or decisions or whatever the situation is at hand right so think about these types of simple phrases that we just talked about so that way that in the process of uh, creativity when you guys are thinking about your next best ideas to implement with value you are going to be able to also support each other because that's basically the whole expression of right two two brains are better than one two minds are better than one 
this is how it, it evolves. This is how it, it really helps out to be able to do that. So I'm going to ask uh, to go to the next uh, particular opportunity and I'm gonna explain the exercise real quick and then we're gonna do uh, go into our breakout sessions. But Dr. as so one of our, know, yes, go ahead. I was actually uh, thinking for this um, piece as well, it would be much more fun if we could actually just similar to the last activity, just take in volunteers um, and do like two rounds. And, and then of course, um, hope that these students go back and, and do that with their best friends and, and you know, share your ideas. So okay. I think it'll be more interactive rather than breakout room. So we can choose, um, you know, four volunteers or six volunteers and, and do two or three rounds of this together. I think it'll be more fun. Yeah, absolutely. No problem. Um, so am I picking two students? Y yes, you are. Okay, perfect. So I will explain the details here since we're all going to be in one happy room. So one of the last particular exercises that I really want you guys to think about, because sometimes it's hard for people when they tell me like, I don't know how to come up with really good ideas, right? And let alone start a business out of it, you know, potentially, right? It's not, it's not easy. Well, today is your great new day that you're going to learn this skill and we're going to all benefit from it. So I'm going to pick out two volunteers specifically. And in the first minute, each volunteer is gonna share what they're passionate about. So I'm gonna give you an example in just a minute, but ultimately the first person's gonna share, the second person's gonna share, and then you guys are gonna brainstorm on how you can combine your passions to create a business together right now in the third minute. And then you guys are gonna to have to pitch it on the spot spontaneously woo it's not hard it's but it is a, you know it takes your mind to think about it because you're trying to combine you're, what we're doing is we're practicing the idea of synergy and finding connections between things that didn't exist before until a minute ago right and so this is going to really help with the creativity process and ideation and i really want you guys to like Hamish said to practice it with your friends because the more you do it the more you'll get better at it, right? So just to kind of give you an example for uh, some folks here that want the example. So student one says, I love dancing. And student two says, I love computers. And so they brainstorm for just a second. And then their pitch comes out to be, we have created the first smart dance studio where the floor will teach you the moves and let you know if you're moving correctly or not. Right, that's going to be the business idea that they're going to come up with to be able to figure out if this is specifically something that they're interested in. Right. Um, oh, <laughs> no problem. Um, and so we specifically will get that opportunity to um, really help understand each other. So just to kind of get the party started here, because I probably I'm already intimidating a lot of you, <laughs> but it, my promise is going to be it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Uh, let's take a look at our chat room. All right, let's let's take a look. Um, okay, so if I can have Jisha, and I think who else we haven't seen today? Let's see. How about Swayam? Swayam and Jisha. Okay, you guys are going to. Take a first minute and uh, starting with Jisha and you're going to share a couple of hobbies you're passionate about. And then we'll go to the second minute. Go ahead, Jisha. I love doing anything from which we can learn something new. Which no, this I is your passions. About the... Yeah, these are your passions, the things that you're already yeah. doing. So what are you passionate about? And uh, I, I am really passionate about making an app which helps in reducing the pollution of the whole world. All right, pollution apps. All right, yeah. so I am, your turn. What are you passionate about? Come on, you were there in a minute ago. <laughs> you can't, come out, come out, wherever you are. <laughs> Come on, this is going to be fun, I promise. Swayam, can you hear us? All right, let's, for the sake of time. I think, we, I think yeah. we scared him off. Um, yeah, yeah, I, my, my, my job is done. <laughs> 
All right, let's see who else. Sorry. Okay, Swayam, you're on mute. Take yourself off of mute. mute. Almost there. There you go. Yes, so right. I'm, I'm passionate about um, doing MUNs and debates. I love okay. them. I do them. I do them a lot. Quite recent. And now it's happening online. So it's more of fun. And apart from, apart from that, I, I love skating. I do skating a lot. And skating you can do at your home. And I have a terrace also. It's a terrace home. So it's I can do it in my terrace also. So skating, I love it. Uh, I love doing skating. All right, and let's yes, stop there. From... So skating and political debates. Jisha, you're hey. loving you're loving apps. So you I guys actually, now have to think about me too. Even I love debates. I actually am really good in debates, and I actually do have two brainstorming ideas. All right, or let's ready. do it. Let's let's talk to Swayam about it. What could be combining these passions together to create your new business? Actually, uh, can I tell my idea? Well, you're talking to Swayam. You're brainstorming right now. So you're talk to him. So it's like, I want to reduce the pollution and you like debating. So we can make a platform in which uh, people, means people can debate with each other on pollution, which can make people believe and motivate them to stop polluting the country. So it would be a platform which will, help the uh, changing the whole world and the future of the whole all the people living in this beautiful world by making more beautiful by stop polluting by making a platform in which we can debate on uh, debate with people who don't believe in reducing pollution or are or to think they are helpless to it and you can make them believe and motivate them so i am how about you do you like that idea business idea um, yes, I, I, I love it. It's, it's nice. It's good. All right. So uh, let's, let's see how you're going to pitch it to us. How would you sell it to can me? Can I also? Sh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Like my own idea? Yeah. Yes, my go own ahead. Idea. Yeah, so um, my uh, one idea is that um, the, it's a problem that I was facing these days. Um, that was that uh, like uh, the Jisha so, uh, told that she's uh, interested in making apps. So I, I thought of making an app where, uh, you know, we almost write uh, everything about MUNs and we teach people about MUNs and debates because it's not happening like about uh, people who are new to the committee. They are uh, almost they waste their first committee and first year, first MUN experience because there are a lot of people who just try to win and win and they uh, exploit the people who are first MUN. So I want to actually teach them uh, so, sort of through an app, through technology and also list like all the MUNs that are available and that are going around in India. Because I want, why I want to do that is because um, uh, just because I, I could not at attend the Harvard MUN because of this, because I just didn't uh, know about it. Howard, I mean, I just couldn't attend because I didn't know about it. And like many friends, they were like skeptical. Like if I would have attended that, then I would have been. So they were like, they didn't tell me mm -hmm. because they were like, I want to win. I want to win. So there's a business where through app, we can tell that these all MUNs are conducted across the countries and you can join these. And apart from that, we can have additional features where we teach All right, them. One minute, sort of videos for one minute is done. One minute is done. I told you guys it's yes, only yes. three minutes that you're sharing these particular ideas. But that was a good first round that we're connecting the app to also teach debate as well as solve pollution and climate. So give themselves a round of applause. That's going to be the first round. I'm going to select two other and students. Also, uh, Dr. So well, I, the, came up, I, came yes. idea, I came up with an idea that probably Swayam and Jisha could, uh, you know, that they could actually talk about pollution at the MUNs um, and make that the main core, core policy topic, right? And, and I think that would get people to really talk about it, uh, debate about it, and then of course come and, and propose solutions about it. So um, yeah, that was just my two cents. <laughs> there you go, right? That's more synergy. Even I have two cents here. about this. 
Yeah, like, go ahead. And addition to this. So like if you're making an app about you know, listing immunes, so we will list each and every immune that people are organizing. So what we can do is as a business standpoint, we can ask the people who are organizing the immunes in order to list your immune in our app, you have to donate some for like some percentage of your like uh, revenue to an NGO, which is working to, uh, to combat climate change and pollution. So, so by that you are solving both the problems. Very cool. There you I, go. Also, there you I go. also have an idea. Like we can, uh, like uh, Jisha can make, make an app which would connect those who want solutions and those who provide solutions, and through that connection, they could reduce the pollution. So a more of an interactive chat feature, perhaps, yes, exactly, to be able to, exactly, exactly. yeah, to be able to add on to that feature. Jisha, I mean, Swayam, I think you got something going on there. You may need to touch base later on and figure out if this is a reality that can be happening. A lot of people like this idea. So look at all the feedback that you guys are getting. All right, round two. Yes, go ahead. I was just saying that it's so interesting that two simple passions can have so many business ideas to it like everybody i'm telling you this is a magical exercise nobody believes me until now <laughs> so all right let's see how about prisha you haven't spoken in quite a while let's do this um and then let's see who else who just we can, we can get ayush sorry in. ayush yeah go ahead so you guys uh, passion share your passions for a minute between each other go ahead uh, i should start first yes please i love graphic designing as well as i love psychology a lot psychology and graphic designing so like i can combine both of them psychology and graphic designing because in graphic designing we can use the psychology to make the symbols in, in su such a way that they can attract the people and the psychology can be used for that as well all right, Ayush, how about that? What's your passion? I love astronomy, artificial intelligence, and robots. So we can build robots to create a society for humans outside the Earth. All right, combine time. How are you going to combine these two passions together? Maybe we can use the psychology uh, in the robots to make them more realistic or something. Maybe if that's possible. like how to we can compare the human brain psychology which are applied in human and remember guys you're creating a product or service so what is the service or product that you're producing to the society we can use the graphics for making the robot so it's the a it's a graphic design company for the robot no, for making the, he's telling about making a robot that goes so we can make it more attractive and, you know, more delightful by making it graphically more attractive and stuff. We also have to figure out how the robots are going to solve a problem in the society and how. Yeah, remember, it was idea yeah, uh, plus value. Yeah, and the uh, robot can be uh, having the, you know, the, he can understand feelings and can help the people who are going through depression and stuff like that, stress stuff. And it, uh, we can, you know, make him study about the psychological uh, stuff that goes on in the human brain. And the robot itself can help the person to go get out of the depression and stress that they are going through. Ayush, do you agree or something new? Um, I have something new. Okay. Uh, we can send robots to insta uh, interstellar space instead of humans to uh, many light years away from Earth. And uh, we can use graphics uh, to represent our Earth uh, through uh, exoplanet uh, aliens uh, and find exoplanets that have life so we can take help of NASA for sending our robots. Come on, Prisha. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Prisha, to go ahead, tell me how, how would you add on to that? Like um, it's not bad, it's really good. Maybe we can use the robot for both the things. Like we can make two different robots, one for humans and one for going in outer space. All right. <laughs> or the one robot can do both the things. So you can buy, if you want for psychology, you can buy the same robot. And if you want to send him to any other space, then also you can use the same robot. All right, we're going to open it up to the audience. How attractive one? is this? I think it would be a good, good idea. Yeah, that's that's a really good idea. But like, yeah. I also have another one. 
So Ayush talked about that he is into artificial intelligence, you know, making complex applications, and Prisha likes psychology and graphic designing. So what we can do is we, uh, you can make a service which uses you know proper application for pro proper artificial intelligence and complex programs to create digital images of uh, of like a, of an app of an abstract thing. For example, like during presentations people always tend to you know uh, to visualize something through images or some way so it's always better to have uh, or an image instead of uh, like a uh, sentences or words so people are it's people can wrap their heads around uh, complex things painting of something i like it more than my idea now yeah you can just even I type a word like to add and uh, the art the app can make images of that uh, that other uh, complex thing so that it's easier to people to understand i would like I to add on to tanish uh, i thought of an advertising agency where you, instead of using yeah. human humans and using the psychology of humans you could rather use ai you have uh, you could have ai use the psychology to produce graphic designs as an advertising agency so since it's not very you're not using human labor you're sort of cutting down the human labor it it's going to make you a lot of profit that way so yeah you're more effective just there you go. All right, yeah. let's go for one more group. If uh, if Rishi agrees, we can do one more group. Uh, I think we're we're running out of time, but we're running out of time. All right, let's then wrap up here in our next slide. But give yourselves a round of applause. That's basically you coming up with business ideas in three minutes, ladies and gentlemen. See, it was not that hard. It's just a matter of finding a starting point. And today, what you've learned is that your starting point are your passions, and that's as simple as it gets. So let's go ahead and wrap up. Um, I need uh, different people to tell me all the different things that we've learned today, starting from the top left. So, you know, let's just, Mishti, go ahead and say the first one. What's, what's the first thing that you resonated with today? Uh, finding the mindset of uh, the mind, the different mindsets. I kind of find versus fixed, fixed mindset. So wonderful. And, How about Adeep? What what did you resonate with today? Uh, today I really love that. Uh, How you like the last exercise? Like uh, we came up with an ideas in like three minutes. So like it's all a matter of starting point. Once you get the starting point, the way is yours. Like. So I really learned how to get a starting point and how to grow your ideas and how to work on your ideas. Absolutely. Adyasha, how about you? Um, the workshop is called Connect the Dots and the last exercise ultimately connected all the dots that we've learned about. And the funny thing is that I used to do this on my own uh, at times. Like I would come up for business ideas, the craziest of stuff, even if I didn't have to qualifications enough to do them and i thought it was a silly practical idea that i used to dream up in my free time but now that we've done this activity i kind of realized that the simplest ideas are the most important ones so creativity is simple it doesn't have to be complicated as everyone makes it so ultimately i think that's what i took from this workshop perfect ayushi how about you I think I I this is, I think this is something a lot of people go through. It's like when you 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 know given a problem that you have to work on, you tend to doubt your own abilities, and that's something a lot of people struggle with. So what I learned was that to be creative, you have to believe yourself that you are creative, and that once you are in that frame of mind, you can easily uh, start with whatever you want to start with, and it makes the whole process a lot easier to work towards. Did I help you debunk some myths and misconceptions today? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. I mean, because I've read, I've, I, I, ha I did read. I started reading this book called Thinker Toys, and it, it's about creative thinking. And I mean, I read it, I finished it, but I was never able to really put into practice what I read. And that, and like this whole workshop really helped me, you know, I, you know, resonate, um, draw comparisons between what I read and you know what you talked about. And I think that really helped me put things into perspective. Wonderful. Jisha, how about you? Actually, I learned a lot uh, in this whole meeting that we did. There's like a lot of things, but what it helped me is in believing in myself because I sometimes do have problems in believing in myself. 
so it's yeah, hard but so it's hard but today i realize it's not that hard to believe because i learned many things but this was the main thing i learned i could talk for hours and hours on what we learned today and you were not even supposed to be here look how look at this <laughs> you yeah. just happened to be here this is awesome how about let's see who else um tanish go ahead tell me what you learned today yeah the most important thing that i found out found out today was that communication is key when you're discussing ideas so like i found out that being supportive and you know you know adding on to things rather than you know destroying them or removing the ideas it actually helps you to brainstorm stuff more and come up with cool solutions to problems and come up with business ideas so i think that was the most like mind blowing thing that i learned today yeah and overall about you know getting to know that creativity is can be visible in different in a lot of ways so it's not always about being artistic it can it can come up in every single field that we are working towards or like we are studying so i think if you give your best in a particular thing if you're passionate about it you can be great at it no matter like what the field is what 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 the field is about and what the discipline is like absolutely i'm going to open it up to the floor go ahead can i add something to what tanish said mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, actually you talked about teamwork and the word team says together everybody achieves more mm -hmm. yeah exactly absolutely we're and starting to like see to a lot add... that collaboration is is one of the main competitive advantages if an organization has that so it's you know i know it has been instilled in us unfortunately in society that competition is the way to go but i'm sorry to burst your bubble today it's collaboration that is going to get you farther in life and i hope that you guys take this to heart um any other last minutes before we I end i would like to i would like to add one thing like uh, never resist yourself from putting efforts because if you don't put efforts there is nothing to achieve like always keep putting efforts and trying and extending your limits uh, coming out of your comfort zone and doing something that which might resist you from within but it will definitely lead to you a uh, great success and just to kind of add that uh, deep my mentor said to me what you are looking for is also looking for you Absolutely. And one more thing, whatever yes, you do, the world, the world will follow you. Think you got to repeat that again. You, uh, the internet was a little swappy. Yeah. I was just saying that whatever you give to the world, the world would return it back to you. All right, that's that. I, you better that, believe that. That Absolutely. is actually that is actually known as the law of attraction. There you go. Absolutely. No, this is great, guys. I'm talking to a, a really smart group of people. I'm humbled by all of your existing knowledge, you know, but I, I am so grateful. I am so happy that I got the opportunity to spend Halloween with you guys. I mean, Baby Yoda was really smart, don't you think? He taught us a lot today and yeah. tonight. And um, I want to thank the Big Red Group for the opportunity to facilitate. I apologize for extending our evening a little bit longer than expected, but I had so much fun. I couldn't have thought about it any other way. I mean, we had so much fun too. Absolutely. Absolutely. We got to learn so many new things that yeah. we could not have if we didn't attend this workshop. And, and thank you, you to that you, you wake awesome. up at six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Time. Absolutely. I wake absolutely. up this way. I just wake up this okay. way. So lockdown, it's, it's really, all good. <laughs> it's really tough in lockdown to wake up early, right? I, I actually, know. Actually, I know, but you guys like did such up. a good job. Okay, on that note, guys, any last takeaways? We'd love to hear more. If anyone has uh, any more comments, any takeaway from today's work would like to share before we um, close this down? Anyone else? Uh, in the, Rishi, you're in, breaking. Yeah, and what what do you guys want? You know, you think guys... about doing after you've learned all this knowledge. Any inspirations? Learn more things without stopping. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you I, need to I, get I out. Keep thinking something. Like, keep thinking something new. Uh, 
I had a personal question. And not to underestimate your own ideas that this must be wrong. This must be not be possible because everything is possible till you think it. Like basically, don't build perceptions about something. Yeah. So I wanted to ask, like, how are you affiliated with ASU? So, like, are you working in a department or something? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so, Tanish, I work for uh, the business school. Um, it's called Thunderbird School of Global Management, and um, I personally have um, led a team of recruiters who help study inside the United States uh, for their master degree programs in international business. Uh, but alongside my studies, I've uh, studied, you know, my doctorate, my master's, all that stuff uh, by working and studying together at the same time uh, to get to this level simply because I felt that we collectively as the world have more potential to do better training in uh, creative, creative leadership. And um, it was just through my experiences that I just decided, yes, I have a job, but that's not going to stop me to really go forward for my passion to help people like you today to understand all the mistakes and incorrect lessons that I've learned from society and how we can reshape the future of leaders by instilling the correct ideas that will help you develop and grow to the best version of yourself, right? And so I recommend that to all of you guys is that, yeah, you may have a job that's gonna pay the bills, but then you're gonna potentially have a job that's really going to really get you to that next level of what uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs talks about self-actualization because we're all getting to a point where in society, especially your generation, we all have to be more purpose driven. And so that's kind of where I kind of wanted to be the example and do what I do right now. So I'm helping people get masters, but at the same time, I'm helping become better leaders and in creative leadership as well. And that's yeah. an inspiring story right there. Mom, and, uh, how can we contact you if you have some more doubts? Yeah, so the big red group is going to be um, the main people that you will always be in contact with. So you guys can get my information and um, I'll be happy to, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, if you guys want to message me that way or my email address, whatever way is easier. And don't worry guys, we'll, we'll get you all the info needed. So, you know, towards the end, we'll, we'll talk about a few logistical stuff. Um, Ananya, Bodhar, you have something to add? Hi. Uh, I just wanted to say that I enjoyed this session and I learned a lot. And as it is said that communication is the key. And, you know, in this session, the communication made it, you know, so simpler to express our views. And it made a comfortable environment to just talk about and just talk about, talk out about you know, many stuff that, uh, inspirational stuff, I would say. And it was always very positive. The students should have, I mean, my, I'd call, I'd like to call them my friends. I don't even know them, but uh, the debates were so good. And, uh, you know, the content was really relevant. And it was also well presented by many of us right here. And uh, I'd like to say that uh, going, uh, it is like, it is true that people say go with the flow but i'd like to add on to that you know you you don't have to drown the flow and you just don't have to get pushed just uh, simply go with the flow and indeed the universe has planned for us and you have to just trust the universe yeah and i used she had a question uh i have one question that's comparison about a perfect 4.0 gpa student versus a student with average grades and then converted their grades to stop top student in their class. Uh, the comparison of these two, uh, elaborate a little bit on that. I'm, I'm trying to understand the question, like what's the difference between them from what angle? Is it just- Maybe we've lost Ayush, but- um, the Personality? Yes, ma'am. I would like Mama. to ask a question. Uh, like, uh, like in future, I want my master's in business uh, from uh, from a college in USA. So, what changes do you think 
uh, to what all character characteristic do you think a person should have to get into a big school like Harvard for the MBA degree? Like what? Oh uh, yeah, uh, I should no, change that's a, myself. That's a great question. Um, think about what we just did today, right? In some cases, we are starting to develop your entrepreneurial mindset, right? Because again, if creativity is becoming the first or second top skill right now in 2020, right? More and more schools all over the world are curious to see how are you implementing that creativity in your own style, your own version, right? It doesn't have to be super profit making, but think of it from now since you have the time to start developing something, right? Um, I'm a big, component of i know it's hard to say during this time but travel <laughs> if even if it's between different cities um, inside of india i i can only imagine but i just feel like travel really helps open up your mind to different ideas and i think that's why it's it takes a level of conversation to the next level versus someone who may not have traveled so i think that provides perspective but more importantly, I think what you should think about is, is really stepping up your game in your school when it comes to leadership activities, right? So if it's a student club or a class representation in a debate, whatever, you know, like what have you done to be able to kind of be the representative of a particular group around you or volunteer group, whatever the situation is, because Remember, everyone is just trying to understand who you are and what you represent and what you're after, right? And so if you share the kind of past, present, and future in a really cool story format, that's going to really attract them. And now we have so many tools, right, um, that can share how we can uh, narrate that story to the reader, right? I've seen some people create websites. I've seen some people, you know, build blogs um, or just even just a, a one pager to just kind of share and express themselves in a more creative fashion. Um, also, I would, I would like to add something um, here. The, uh, the first thing would be really not to really think, uh, you know, you're too young to think about an MBA. Uh, right now, right? Uh, to be successful, to do something, um, you don't have to always uh, get a master's degree or do your MBA, right? So I, I think these questions will be, you yourself will be able to answer them uh, once you are in college, right? Um, and, and then, of course, Dr. Sobul talked about you have to do really well in school, but mostly for your MBA applications, of course, what you've done in college and then afterwards in your job setting, right? Or if you become an entrepreneur, if you do something, how did you really face the challenges there? What did you do um, to overcome those challenges? That's what really matters in a business school application, uh, right? So to be specific, but at this point of time, Deep, I would say is just, of course, focus on, on the academic part, focus on a lot outside of your school, and that will just give you perspective as to what you want to do, right? There are a lot of types of master's programs. To just give you an example, in education itself, at Harvard, you have 15 different kinds of uh, master's programs that you can do in education, right? So what exactly do you want to do? Of course, be specific, all of that. But as, as Dr. Sogol said, just make sure that you are always trying to critically analyze stuff. You are stepping out of your comfort zone and that will make you a better informed leader, right? And other than that, you can always, um, you can always uh, send us a message or an email and we'll be happy to check out with you. Uh, on that note, uh, Dr. Sogol, thank you so much. That brings us to the end of our um, you know, presentation today, our creative workshop. Thank you so much. I hope all of you become a lot more creative um, you know, in the coming days, coming weeks. I, uh, and, um, and of course- uh, Yes. Uh, yes, Swayam, you have something to add? Uh, yes, I, I just want to say that mom looks beautiful. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Such a gentleman. <laughs> and, and very cheerful, of course. So, guys, um, on that note, uh, please make sure that any questions related to Dr. Sogol, if you have to ask her, her anything, please email us and we'll put you in touch with her. Uh, we'll send you her email address. Also, to make sure uh, what your learnings have been and to make these learnings better in the coming workshops, 
we will be sending you, um, uh, you know, a feedback form tomorrow. Uh, please make sure that you fill it for us. Give us your feedback, some comments for Dr. Sogal, what you think you learned, all of these things, and would really appreciate your responses to us. Um, that's number one. Um, and on the second note, we have another negotiation workshop coming up with another professor um, next month. Um, please see if you want to register for it. Go to the bigregroup.com. We have two really interesting programs on entrepreneurship and the Harvard Wild Sea, which some of you have already done with us. Um, we are doing it again in January. Um, please uh, reach out to us for more information and, and please visit the website. But on that note, note Dr. Sogol, any parting words from your side before I end the meeting? Just don't underestimate yourself. You already are a perfect masterpiece and you guys are in the journey of self-discovery and every day is going to be producing something new about yourself. And just remember that you are already complete. You're just trying to figure out stuff as you go along and we're going to one day benefit from your discovery. Thank you. So that's it. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Students Thank, you so much. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This amazing workshop. Thank you. Yeah, My pleasure, I'm guys. already... I'm already Ma thank excited. You already excited to join the Thanks negotiation and workshop. Have a nice Halloween. Happy, Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, Halloween to you. Happy Halloween. Bye, Bye ma'am. Ma stay connected. Bye, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, Ma stay connected. Bye. Bye. See you. Stay connected, ma'am.